What's up? This is Casey Ferris with RampantDesignTools.com. Welcome to part one of Discovering After Effects. We're going to take a look at the interface and the tools and some of the palettes um, and kind of just get you acclimated, I guess, with the After Effects interface. Once this tutorial is done, you're going to be like, oh yeah, 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 I know what the tracker palette is. <laughs> it's not like I'm dumb. So I'm going to open After Effects. Okay, so when you open After Effects for the first time, this is what you get. This is kind of the standard interface. So I'm going to briefly talk about all these palettes that are open right now, and then we're going to get into some other ones. And so the first thing you're going to want to worry about is the project palette. This is pretty much your browser for any elements that are going to be in your composition. So here's where you'll have movie clips, textures, and other elements that you can add to your comp. Down here there's a couple buttons that we're going to probably talk about later. And if I click on 8BPC, I can change some of my project settings um, from time code to frames to color settings, bit depth, as well as audio sample rate. You can create a new folder to put footage in. This is kind of like a bin in Final Cut Pro or a folder in Premiere. And when you right click in this window, you can make new things and you can import things. And so you can make a new comp, you can make a new folder, you can make a new Adobe Photoshop file, uh, and you can import elements. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import a couple elements. These are from the Rampant Sampler Pack Volume 2. I'm gonna import my 3K Fire, my Smoke and Fog, and a watercolor. And there they show up in the project window. And I can scroll over and look at all the nifty things about them. And down here is our timeline window. And so I'm going to drag this down to the timeline window. And it automatically creates a new comp. And a comp is kind of like a sequence in an editing program. It's a timeline with layers. And so here's my footage. This is the Rampant Smoke 15. You'll see I'm viewing it up here in the composition window. This is what the end viewer is going to see. And in this composition palette, you have a bunch of little options down here. Most of them we don't need to get into right now, uh, but here are the important ones. We have magnification, just like any of the Adobe programs. So you can view your work at 100% or any zoom level you want. Kind of related to this is the comp resolution. And this basically dumbs down your footage so that you can work with it a little easier. After Effects is really good at making beautiful things. It's not very good at playing them in real time. And so all of the power goes to the compositing and that kind of thing, not so much the playback. You pretty much have to render everything before you play it back. Even just this movie, which is a ProRes movie, won't play back in real time until I render it. And so this resolution will basically dumb down your canvas so it doesn't have to do as much work rendering. And so you can view it at full resolution, but you probably want to view it at 100% if you're going to do that. Then you can see how, how pretty it is. But then you can take down the resolution to half, third, quarter, and see how it gets all pixely. That's because there's a quarter of the pixels. But when you view it at 25%, you don't notice. And so it's actually a good idea to kind of make these match. You can even set this to auto. And so if you're viewing at 50%, it only renders half of it, which is good on your computer because you really don't care about the other half anyway since you're viewing it at 50%. That's a lot. There's also a couple other things. Um, you can view different kinds of cameras. You can even view it in four views, kind of like a 3D animation program like Maya or 3ds Max or Blender. And this is mostly used for the 3D capabilities of After Effects. And we'll get into that in a later tutorial. But another important thing that I want to show you is the exposure. And what this does is make your composition lighter or darker. And it's important to know if you make this really bright, that's not how it's going to render. This is just your preview. So if you click this reset exposure, it'll get back to how it's actually going to render. So what this is really used for is to see what your footage would look like, say, on a brighter monitor or a darker monitor. So those are the kind of need to know things on this composition window. And so I'm going to go through the other most important windows. Um, some of these we probably won't work with for a while. But a really important palette is the preview palette. This kind of gives you the transport controls for your comp, as well as audio controls. You can have your playback loop, you can have it ping pong, you can have it just play through once, and that's kind of where you toggle that. There's also the RAM preview button, and RAM preview is basically 
your best friend in After Effects. Because remember how nothing plays in real time? You want to hit that RAM preview because it stores all of these frames in RAM so it can actually play it back in real time. It's pretty much like rendering in a Final Cut or Premiere. You can also set the frame rate, you can tell it to skip frames, and here you can set the resolution of your RAM preview. So let's say you want to work in full resolution, but you just want to preview in quarter resolution. Then when you hit this RAM preview button, it's just going to render in quarter resolution and show you the quarter resolution movie. And that way you don't have to worry about switching these. But just remember, if you RAM preview your footage and it looks horrible, it's probably because it's at quarter resolution. And so I'm going to set my work area really quick to show you kind of what this does. I'm going to hit RAM preview and it's just rendering these frames. And then once that goes through, then it'll play in real time. So I'm going to stop that. There's also effects and presets, which is a bunch of little effects that somebody has already done all the work to make look good. And um, you can just throw this on your footage and some of them will apply seven or eight effects and some of them will only apply an effect with the correct settings. And so talking about effects, let's go to window and go to effect controls move this over here and effect controls usually show up kind of behind the project window and so you switch between project and effect controls that's how I like to work if you select your layer you can right click and then this is where you can apply all sorts of effects to them you can also go up to the effect menu and so you can do things like color correction there's hue saturation just like Photoshop you can colorize you know and make the smoke bright green if you want to but basically, this window is dependent on what is selected down here. And so if you have a couple different layers, you can apply different effects to each one of them. Let's say on this one, I want to make it red. Then I can say tint and make all the white pixels red. Maybe I want this one to be white and I want to put a blur. That looks good. And so, so depending on which layer I select, that changes this effect window because all of these effects on this window are applied to the selected layer. And if you go up to the window menu, you can find all of the different windows that After Effects has. Uh, there's quite a few of them and half the time you don't use most of them. But one thing that you do use is the tracker. And this is, and this is something we'll get into later, but this is where you do all your motion tracking and stabilization. There's also a paragraph window, which gives you your normal uh, paragraph options for your text. So if I were to type doggy, I can, you know, center that left normal thing. There's also the character window, which gives you more options for your text. And you can set your font size, you can, you know, set the spacing in between them. This is a pretty standard thing, you know, in Photoshop and Illustrator, any word editing program. Um, but those are available in After Effects as well. I also want to run through the tools really quick. Selection tool for selecting things, obviously, your hand. For moving around in your comp window, you have a zoom. You have rotate, so you can rotate layers with the mouse. You have your camera tool, which we'll get into later. Your pan behind tool, which is used for a couple things. Uh, you can reset the anchor point of a layer, and then you can pick your rotate tool and rotate around that anchor point. And there's also times when you'll have a layer that's maxed out, and then you can move the layer under its mask without moving the mask. So that's what that tool's for. There's also a rectangle as well as ellipse, polygon, rounded rectangle, star tool. And those are used to make shapes or masks on layers. And then you can pick all your masking options, which we'll get into in the masking tutorial. So there's also the pen, which is similar to the shape tool, but you know, you can draw your own shapes. Um, they're, they're vector shapes, kind of like Illustrator. This is really similar to the pen tool in Photoshop or Illustrator and um, we'll get into this pretty heavily later as well. There's also the type tool, pretty self-explanatory. Then there's the brush, clone, and eraser tool, which are pretty much like the Photoshop tools of the same names. And so when you have a layer, you can clone things out, you can paint on it, or you can erase things. And that's kind of dependent on what you're doing. Um, also something we'll get into later. So the last thing I want to show you is the render queue. And basically all it is is setting a composition to render. And so if you have a composition open, just go up to the composition menu and hit add to render queue. And the render queue pops up in the timeline window. Here you can set your output settings and your format of your video, your size. You can set the render settings, time, frame rate, and you can also tell it where to go and actually where to put your render. And so 
Pretty simple, and we're going to walk through the render queue on every little project that we make. But for now, um, this should give you a general idea of how After Effects is organized. If you're familiar with Photoshop or Final Cut or Premiere or a mix of all of those programs, this should come pretty easy for you. If it looks a little bit overwhelming, don't worry because we're going to take little baby steps and things are going to make sense a little bit more when we're actually working with sequences. And in the next lesson, we're going to get more into the layers and the effects and the properties and uh, kind of how to make a composition. So, so make sure to catch that and I'll see you next time.